Okay, let's uh, look into another example. In this example, we have to find the current I naught, which is this current flowing uh, through the 10 ohm resistance. Now, if you note, there are three meshes here. So, we'll name this one the current in the first mesh as I1, the current in the second mesh as I2, and current in the third mesh as I3, all three in the clockwise direction. And we'll start writing the KV equation. So for the first mesh, we'll start from here, minus 24, plus 10. Now you can see that I1 is going down, and I2 is going up. And since we are in mesh 1, so we'll take I1 as uh, the superior one. So we'll write I1 first. So it is 10. I1 minus I2. Then we are in this mesh. We have written the equation for 10. Now we'll write the equation for 12. Now in this case also, since we are in mesh 1, so we'll write I1 first. So it is I1 and I3 is going in the opposite direction. So 12 I1 minus I3. So 12 I1 minus I3 equals 0. So this is the KVA equation for mesh 1 and by simplifying you get 11 I1 minus 5 I2 minus 6 I3 equals 12. So this is the first equation. Now let's go into the mesh number 2. Again we start from the left corner and since we are in mesh number 2 so we will write I2 first. So it is 10 I2 minus I1. So 10 I2 minus I1 and then we come here. This is 24 into I2 and then we come here. It is 4 into I2 minus I3 because they are in opposition. So uh, 4 I2 minus I3 equals 0. So this is the equation for the second mesh and by simplifying uh, we get the second equation. Now we come on to the third mesh. So this is the third mesh. We start from left corner and since we are in third mesh so I3 will come first. So 12 I3 minus I1. So 12 I3 minus I1. Then we come here 4 we are in the third mass, so I3 will come first, so 4 I3 minus I2. So 4 I3 minus I2, and then this uh, voltage source, plus, which is 4 I0, so plus 4 I0. Uh, now, one thing you will note that in all other equations, we had either I1 or I2 or I3, but in this case, in addition to I1, I2, I3, there is I0. We have to convert this in the form of I1 or I2 or I3. So if you look here, I0 is coming down, I1 is also coming down, but I2 is going up. So we can say that I0 is equal to I1 minus I2. So I0 is equal to I1 minus I2. We have to substitute this value in equation number 3 to get all in I1, I2, I3 form. So after substitution, uh, this is our equation and by simplifying we find the 3A equation. And now all the three equations. So these are the three equations. The best way is to solve by means of a Kramer rule if we have three variables or more. And uh, the rule for this we have learned in the nodal also that you use matrix equation. So this is we write all the uh, coefficients of the variables. So the coefficient of I1 here is 11 so we write 11. Here it is negative 5, so negative 5. 
and negative 6, negative 6. Similarly, for the second equation, negative 5, so negative 5, positive 19, positive 19, negative 2, negative 2, and the third one is negative 1, negative 1, and 2. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, and 2. So this is the determinant part. Then we write all the three variables, I1, I2, and I3 in the column form, and equals to the output. So this is 12 and 0 and 0. So this is the equation converted into matrix form. Now uh, we need to find delta and delta 1 and delta 2 and delta 3. So delta is just this determinant if we solve this. So uh, let's see. This is the determinant delta. Uh, in order to solve through the grammar rule we repeat the first two rows at the bottom. So you can see up to here was the determinant and then we are repeating the first row. This is the first row so we are repeating it here and then we are repeating the second row. So this is the second row. So now we have five rows and you can see these arrows. This is showing that you have to multiply all three and then we add, uh, then we multiply all these three and then we add and multiply all these three and we add. So multiplying uh, on this, these three we get 418 and multiplying these three we get negative 30 so plus negative 30 and multiplying these three we get negative 10 so plus negative 10. Then these on the other corner, the left hand side we have negative signs so we will start with the negative sign. So negative multiplication of all three which comes to be 114 then negative sign multiplication of these two uh, sorry these three is 22 so negative 22 then another negative sign and multiplication of these three is 50 and the net result is 192 so the determinant is 192 now we have to find delta 1. Now the technique is that to find delta 1 we replace the first first column with the output. So if you remember the output was 12, 0 and 0. So we replace the first column and again by the same technique that we repeat the first two rows. So we are repeating the first two rows and by multiplying and adding we get the answer which is 432. For delta 2 we replace the middle column by the output. So in this case now we are replacing the middle column. This column has been replaced by 12, 0, 0. The first column and the third column remains as the original one. And we f by solving we find 144 and then for delta 3 we replace the third column by the output and again by solving we find it to be 288. Now the formula for I1 is that I1 is equal to delta 1 over delta. So delta 1 is 432 we calculated here and in the previous slide we had calculated delta to be 192 so it is 2.25 amperes. Similarly I2 is delta 2, so delta 2 we calculated here, 144 divided by delta 192, so 0 0.75 and I3 similarly delta 3 over delta is 1.5 ampere. Now the, in the question it was asked how much is I0 and we saw earlier that I0 is actually I1 minus I2, so subtracting 2.2 from 2.25 uh, I2 is 0 0.75, we get the answer 1.5. Now, the another way, another uh, type of questions could be with the current source. Uh, as you can see here in the, these two diagrams, we have a current source here and we also have a current source here and a current source here. 
now in, in these two diagrams the current source are only in one mesh not shared by two mesh so this is just in one mesh mesh number two similarly this current source is also in one mesh mesh number let's say one and this current source is also in just one mesh which is mesh number three so in this type of example we will solve by the normal technique but there could be another type of problem in which the current source is shared between two meshes. So this case the current source along with the resistor is now shared by between two meshes. So whether the current source is alone or along with the resistor in series this technique uh, this will become a super mesh question. Similarly in this diagram you can see that the lone current source it is being shared by mesh number one and mesh number three so this will also form a super mesh now we'll uh, solve the uh, super mesh questions in the next video so let's solve the first technique a normal mesh and the super mesh now in the normal mesh question Again, we, we draw the two currents, I1 and I2, and we write the KVL equation for the, uh, let's say in this uh, case, it is negative 10 plus 4I1 and plus 6I1 minus I2. So this is the uh, equation for mesh number 1. So 10 plus 4I1 plus 6I1 minus I2. But for mesh number 2, we don't need to write the KVL equation because in the mesh number 2, there is a current of 5 ampere which is actually equal to I2. Just the directions are opposite. So we will say that I2 is equal to negative 5. So I2 is equal to negative 5. We don't have to write a KVL equation for mesh number 2 because there is a current source in the branch and now if you substitute I2 is equal to negative 5 in this equation we can find I1 so substituting we found I1 to be minus pair but this is how we solve the normal mesh with the current source in the second example also now we have a current source in this first mesh so we don't need to write a KVL equation we'll only write that I2 since it is in the opposite direction of the I1 so I, I1 is equal to negative 2 milliampere also in mesh number 3 we have a current source in the same direction so we'll write I3 equals 4 milliampere and we'll only write the mesh equation for the second mesh. So in the first mesh, I2 is negative 2 milliampere. In the second mesh, we'll start from this corner, so it is negative 4, negative 4 into 1 kilo multiplied by I2, so we write 1 kilo multiplied by I2 sorry it's I2 minus I3 so 1 kilo multiplied by I2 minus I3 so 1 kilo or 1000 multiplied by I2 minus I3 and then we come here it is 4 kilo multiplied by I2 alone so 4000 multiplied by I2 equal to 0 and as I told earlier I3 is just 4 milliampere so I3 is 4 milliampere now in this equation by putting the values of I3 and uh, we can find I2 from here just putting the value of I3 we can find I2 and so we'll have all the three equations so putting I3 is equal to 4 milliampere in this and by solving we find I2 to be 1.6 milliampere. Now the question 
was actually to find v naught find v naught now v naught is i2 multiplied by 4 kilo so we have found i2 from here 1.6 milliampere so v naught is 4 kilo into 1.6 milliampere which is 6.4 volt a super mesh will do in the next video inshallah